Welcome to the Couples Academy show. Today we're talking about when the one you love wants to leave. Join us now. And good morning. Good morning. Uh, we are Couples Academy and we're here for another great morning. This is Monday. Hope you had an amazing, amazing weekend. We know we did. Now, listen, on last week, we were talking about divorce and all the challenges and circumstances that are really associated with making such a decision. And that really lays a foundation for what we want to talk about here today. We're talking about when the one you love wants to leave, because a lot of times when we're working with couples, it's not like both of them want a divorce. Usually one wants it, one doesn't. One wants uh, the relationship to stay intact. The other one's just not sure. So they're kind of confused. They're vacillating back and forth. And so when we face that situation, we have to do something slightly different. We enter to, into what we call discernment counseling. And the purpose of discernment counseling is getting that couple on the same page. But typically, in this scenario, you have two personalities or two people operating from two different positions. First, you have the rejector, and then you have the rejectee. Now, the rejector is the one who wants to leave. Mm. And oftentimes, they've already made the decision before they've actually left. Maybe they spent several weeks, several months, possibly even years. Oh, yeah, they've probably been contemplated for the longest time. Okay. I even remember just when we were going through the roughest patches, how it started with the imagination of the thing. Like, you just start dreaming, oh, what it would be like to be away from this person, what it would be like, what my house would look like, how, the, how I would furnish it. Like, you start to plan this thing out long before your spouse has any clue you're doing that. Yeah, and, and usually when you come to that decision, you're pretty resolute and determined, mm -hmm. and you're unwavering if you will. Yeah. But then you have the rejectee and the rejectee is the person who is left behind. Mm -hmm. And they're the ones who suffer the most because they didn't anticipate it. It kind of caught them off guard and they're struggling with feelings of depression possibly, but rejection obviously. For sure. But self-blame and what could I have done better or what could I have done differently? And they begin to point the finger at themselves. Uh, and so the feeling of abandonment takes over and it leaves them in a state of confusion. Mm. And, and this is what happens when you love somebody, but they don't love you back in the way that you love them and they want to depart the relationship. And usually when a separation takes place, it creates a logistical nightmare. We've talked about this before, how typically now you have two different uh, homes that you're operating mm -hmm. from, which creates an additional expense. I mean, the financial responsibility associated with managing more than one household is very taxing. It's taxing when you're in one household alone, but then to get another home and having to deal with utilities and having to deal with getting new furniture and all of the miscellaneous expenses associated with that, it's just very difficult. Yeah. And then on top of that, you have co-parented children together. Mm. And now children are living with one primary parent and that leaves even more of a burden in terms of childcare yes. and work schedules and then the impact that it has on the children. And then the other challenge is, listen, if we're separating, is there any clarity on the separation? Like how long? How, like, is it permanent? Is it permanent? Finances? What are we going to do? Yeah. What are we how are we doing holidays? Like, should I call? Should I not call? How are we communicating? Are we oh. getting a divorce? Yeah. Are we not? Mm -hmm. Like, it's it's just so confusing. Right. Uh, can we date other people? Is right. that limit? Oh, man. And yes. So if you don't have clarity because you just want to get out and just want to leave, this is how we see that betrayal takes place in relationships because legally you're still together, though physically you're not. And people think, well, if I'm out of the house, the rules have changed. Right. But if they have not been clarified, it creates a whole lot of issues yeah. in that particular relationship. Yeah. And so, and so we see, generally speaking, when separation happens is the result of three things. Either a person is being pulled out, a person is being pushed out, or a person is being put out. Mm. Now, let's, let's break down the differences. A person who's being pulled out, which leads to separation, nine times out of 10, they are in a hidden affair. And so their heartstrings are being pulled more outside of the relationship than within. Uh, and so they can justify leaving because they already have someone set aside, ready to go to engage in a relationship with them. And so the, the notion that the grass is greener on the other side and 
And think about it, when you're emotionally attached and connected to someone else, what it does is it causes you to dim your emotional light for your partner even more. Like in essence, I can't stand you even more because right. now I'm comparing you to someone where everything's great and everything's right. fun and everything. And your loose. cup is full, right? Absolutely You've been in the full. marriage so long, your cup was dry, you felt your partner was the reason for that, and now you found someone else that's filling your cup up, so you have nothing left for the marriage. Nothing. Right, so you would have had staying power before and a willingness to fight and a willingness to do everything. Mm. Now you have this hardcore position, you can't take it anymore. And it's really perspective yeah. because you have something else you're comparing it to, but it's a false equivalency because the person that you are in this illicit uh, affair with, this relationship with, mm -hmm. you're not getting all of who they are. Right. You're getting a, pit, a percentage, a portion, a highlight of who they are, but once you enter into a committed relationship with that person, now you see them for who they really are. Right, but but them walking out like that, doesn't it justify for them their actions, right? Because the fact that they've stepped out and they feel happy and all of the emotions that they were looking for outside, they're not pouring back into the marriage. Doesn't it in their mind justify, huh, I must have been right then, mm -hmm. right? Because I'm getting everything that I need here, but they're only getting that 20% as That's you right. talk about. Because you don't have to invest out there. You don't. All you have to do is take out there, right? The moment you have to start investing, that's when it, it changes. Absolutely, absolutely. And that's what happens when a person is pulled out. They're emotionally pulled out of the relationship because they're connecting with someone outside of the home. Uh, number two, people who are pushed out. Mm -hmm. Generally, if you're pushed out of your marriage or out of the household, it's because you have frustrations that have gone unresolved, complaints that you've uh, talked about, there's been no course of action, no change, no anything, and so you feel so frustrated you just can't take it anymore. Now, a lot of times, first of all, pulled out, there's a higher percentage of people who separate because of an affair, okay? There's a lower percentage of people who just leave the home because they're frustrated. Right. Because many people remain in frustrated situations, situations but aren't prompted to leave mm -hmm. because they can justify more benefit in staying than in leaving. So sometimes they'll say they're frustrated and there's problems in the relationship, but secretly it's the affair that's pulling them out. Mm. And you know that's the case because when questions are asked, well, why are you leaving and what will cause you to do this? They can never come up with an answer. They're just unclear, they're so uncertain. They, they can't figure it out, they can't put their finger on it, but it's just, I don't know what it is, it's just something I can't answer. Because the truth is, there's an affair going on. Right. Okay. Now, outside of that, there are reasons that people have for being pushed out of that relationship. Truth be told, there are many people who experience midlife crises. And when you're in a midlife crisis, you're reevaluating everything. You question everything. Is this what I really want? Yes. Can I see myself in this for the rest of my life? And you begin to reassess and reevaluate your priorities because things begin to shift in your life. And does my spouse and do my children and my family life play a part in what I want for this new season of my life? Is that a part? Is that partially because of just not dealing with issues? Like you've kind of swept all these issues, some of these that you're talking about under the rug, and now here I am in my midlife crisis mode, questioning life in general. Yeah, yeah. I'm questioning, am I, what did I miss? Absolutely. Right? What, what did I deserve all these years and all of that? Because a midlife crisis is an identity crisis. Yeah. I'm struggling with my own identity. Who am I? Mm -hmm. Am I all that I say that I am? Am I really all that I ought to be? When I look in the mirror, am I satisfied? I'm searching for significance. I feel like I could have done so much more without you than with you. You're away. You're all these things. All this stuff. Play. All the resentment comes out from under that rug, right? And you're blaming that person. Absolutely. So now, and because not everybody experiences the midlife crisis in mm -hmm. the same way where they're going to step out of the relationship. There's a lot of ways you see it show up, right? You, you show know, them getting cars and start trying to do new things. And mm -hmm. oh, there's a lot of things that people do with midlife crisis. But when they're doing it and they're pointing the finger at their spouse as the problem and looking elsewhere for another companion as a result, that's the big issue. Here. Absolutely. Uh, one, one of the other things that can push a person out, now this is why we say you are the sum total of your five closest friends. Now we know that statistically, if you have a close friend who has gone through a divorce or is going through a divorce, that can cause you to really self-reflect and reevaluate your situation. Yeah. Well, man, you're not happy. Am I really happy? And yeah. you know what? I'm not. And right. so because people in your circumference 
are doing it. Right. You feel compelled to do it as well because, oh, well, I guess this, right. this must be the way yes. that we have to do things. Colleen has a comment. She says, even worse, when both parties are married, now they have one person still doing their marital duties and they have their escape fun buddy. Mm -hmm. Right. So you're still married. You're in midlife crisis and you decide I deserve more. So you go and get you a little escape bunny to be able to deal with that and have fun over there. Meanwhile, in the marriage where all the duties and responsibilities exist, you've abandoned. Absolutely. Wow. That's Absolutely. a great comment. Uh, another reason why people are tend to push themselves out. A lot of times when you move like geographic locations or relocations, can create a vulnerability in a relationship mm -hmm. because you no longer have your support system or support network where you are. Mm -hmm. Think about it. We've left to go to Atlanta from New York. We're from New Jersey, right? So in essence, the journey we took, or even when we moved to Costa Rica, the journey we took, all we had was ourselves and our children. Now, if we weren't in a decent relationship, a good relationship, if we had existing problems that really caused a strain, yeah. not having access to family and friends and people who could speak into us, pray for us, strengthen us, it, you can see how relationships can easily fall apart. Absolutely. And, or on the opposite side, it could actually make you stronger because it's all you have, Ideally, right? It just yeah. depends on what's going on inside your head because you know when you think about traveling to different places, there's a lot to explore. Right. If you have the wrong mindset, you will find ways to explore outside of your marriage. If you have the right mindset, you'll try to find ways to get closer within your marriage. Absolutely. Uh, another contributing factor, and I hope this is helping you guys. If so, let us know in the comments. But another reason why people tend to push themselves out of their relationship is when they experience severe external crisis mm. that has nothing to do with the relationship, but the outside pressure is too much for them to deal with. Mm. So we see it happening in Corona, right? Think about it. The pandemic has caused a serious impact on people's relationships. And I think what, what's been cool though, is to talk to couples who have said that it has actually made them closer mm -hmm. because you're in the fire, right? It's like you, you had no choice. You have no job to go to. It's just you and your spouse eating and baking, making treats and all these things. And so you've either been forced to come together and work out your differences or scatter to yeah. your separate corners of the house. And I think, you know, there was a transition that took place mm -hmm. because when the pandemic uh, first hit, major crisis. Right. Oh, man. We were separating. Yes. Uh, potentially filing for divorce. Mm -hmm. We saw all types of crisis and the phone was ringing off the hook. But then you're right. To your point, it was a shift. I guess after they got settled into the quote unquote new norm, hopefully it won't remain in the norm forever. But then people began to say, well, wait a minute. If we have to be together, if we have to be all up in each other's face, let's have some real conversations and yeah. talk about what we like, what we don't like and what we're going to do. So rather than people trying to leave, they were trying to figure out how do we work this thing out? Yeah, realizing we might be all we have for a very long Absolutely. time. Absolutely. Right. And when there's external crisis, that's the last time that you want to separate because, yeah. listen, there's power in partnership, there's power in unity. And when you're left doing things on your own, mm -hmm. it just creates a, a huge burden for you. Yeah. But, but outside of pandemic things, think about the loss of a family member. Think about the sickness of a family member. Think about the financial strain or uh, a job, right, where you're suffering from unemployment. These are external severe crises that can impact that household in a tremendous way, which could potentially lead it's to... It's so separation. true. I'll never forget when we took the kids um, last year to do missions at a camp for kids who had cancer, and they counseled these families. And one of the families spoke out about just how difficult it is for couples who have sick children that a lot of times you have a, an abandonment issue where one of the spouses, like Hassani is saying, he can't take it or she can't take it and they leave the marriage mm -hmm. because of the pressure and the stress. They have taken out all of that anxiety on each other and they see each other as the problem, not the sickness as an individual isolated issue. So it's a big issue. Just when, how do we deal with these anxieties that come upon us? It really makes the difference. It makes or breaks our marriage, right? Even when we're dealing with infidelity, because you think about that as being the big crisis, right? That's the big one, that if you do that, I'm out, which isn't necessarily true. In most cases, we actually do want to work it out. So it's really about how we handle these anxieties as we go through life, honestly. And that's why that personal work, that personal development, 
that personal coaching is so critically important mm -hmm. because if you don't focus on you and you become oblivious to yourself and all you're doing is pointing the finger at your partner, you miss huge opportunities to Seriously. become your best self. Yes. And if I can deal with my own pressures and anxieties and stuff, if I own my own stuff, it will lead to a better relationship. Mm -hmm. But let's talk about the third type. So we talked about people who are pulled out that lead to separation. People who feel like they, they're pushed out because of frustrations they're experiencing. But then you have those who are put out, right? They may be put out by their partner. Now, in this case, dealing with the rejector and the rejectee, the person who's putting you out could still play the role of the one who's being rejected. How? If they're the ones pushing you out. Well, the reality is, Listen, these are individuals, these are spouses who have compl been complaining for a long time. Mm. They've been begging, they've been pleading, they've been trying to encourage counseling, they've been doing everything they can to try to keep the relationship together. But one partner was unwilling, mm. one partner was indifferent, one partner would not comply. And so that uh, spouse was left, was left with no choice and felt like the only thing that they, they could do was put their partner out for their own sanity. Wow. Right? Wow, wow, this wow. happens all the time. And, and the reason why somebody would wind up putting you out is because of your own personal irresponsibility right operating in an irresponsible way for months and years forces your partner to accommodate your irresponsibility i guess they just finally make the decision right they've been giving you the chance for the longest making the opportunity for you to to show you've changed or can change and i guess you get to the point where you gotta go you gotta i've go. given you all the concessions i can i have prayed for you right i give you chance after chance it's time for you no. And some of the reasons why people are being put out in terms of types of irresponsibility, obviously one would be an illicit affair. If you're in an affair and you won't stop or there's ongoing existing affairs from one to the next to the next, at some point the person is just like, you know, I got to protect myself. You've got to go. But sometimes it could be a physical abuse. If you're in a situation where you're physically being harmed and it is no longer safe, Mm. It is time to put that person out. Yeah. Uh, what about habitual lying? Mm. And you, there's just no trust. There's no security in that relationship. Uh, someone who has excessive control and manipulation over that partner. You know, another person who has addictive gambling or maybe mm. you're addicted to, to alcohol or drugs and now is putting the family in danger wow. uh, in terms of their safety and in terms of finances. Right. There are all types of reasons. And sometimes being put out allows you to wake up from your stupor to realize, oh, my God, that's a good point. My actions have gotten me that's in a, a horrible good situation. Yeah. I mean, if you, you if you're not aware and, and everyone keeps on. Um, giving you opportunity after opportunity to get it right and you never get it right. How are you ever going to be motivated to change? Here's a comment from Lakel. She says, I moved my family to a different state for a better life and got closer. Then we started arguing. She started getting homesick and didn't like her job. Now she wants space. Pray for my marriage. Yep, we understand. That's what that see. That's the thing. You know, if you are homesick and you're that type of person and you never wanted to leave in the first place, but you kind of were dragged out, you thought you can handle it. Now you're going to take it out on your spouse. That's what we do in relationships. Like when we feel frustrated or disappointed by our decisions or we regret our decisions. Now we start to blame the person whose idea it was, blame the person that made me go. And that's the issue. So yeah, we'll definitely pray for your marriage. And this is why it's so important to have conversations. And we talk about this all the time. Conversation is one of the biggest things that we struggle with. Effective communication, breakthrough communication. Yeah. But oftentimes there are these feelings that we're harboring uh, deep within our hearts that we're not articulating or maybe we're talking, but our spouse is just not listening and taking us seriously. And that's why it's important sometimes to have a third partner, uh, a third party involved in that process to get you to a better place. Sure. And so if it's you right now struggling, trying to figure out how do we turn our situation around? Listen, call us. That's what we are here for. Go to the website uh, at couplesacademy.org so that we can help navigate you through your situation. Because some of you are on the brink of divorce. Yeah. Some of you are really contemplating separation. You know, we're gonna talk about this tomorrow, what a controlled separation looks like. Yes. Because when you're just in a separation, it is confusing mm -hmm. and all types of things happen and things go wrong hurt on yeah. top of her take right. place yes because there's misunderstanding. No yes. And so these are the things that we want you to be mindful of. Now listen guys. 
Um, we're ending our show, but before we go, we want to talk to you. We've been telling you about an amazing conference coming up, and that is the Unbroken Virtual Marriage Conference. Uh, it's coming up actually next week, October 16th through the 18th. Uh, it was supposed to be live in person. This time it's going to be virtual because of the pandemic. But on last year, we've been talking to you about how amazing this was. We wanted to take a minute to give you a brief synopsis of what it was last year as we prepare for what it's going to be this year. Check this out. If you think that you're going to experience change by sitting in your couch hearing the same thing from the same people, you are sorely mistaken. I just want to encourage married folks to get out to a marriage retreat, honestly, because, I mean, this, we're working, but this is, has been so refreshing to us. <laughs> like nobody's business in this morning workout and there's 120 couples getting their sweat on sweating for their partner and from the depths in the spirit let's give them all come on Sweet. about this particular retreat in addition to all the great content that was shared it was very experiential from day one to the day to the third day day three everything had an experiential type of element to the learning which makes it very impactful because sometimes five years from now you may not remember the message but you remember the experience that yeah. you that you ex experienced yeah a lot of times Sasani and I when we go away we are just pouring out but what was the gift and the big surprise was that we got our cups filled because yeah. as leaders always pouring out yeah. not often do we have a place to go where we're actually poured back into and we experienced it that weekend so even though we look worn out and tired because it was a long weekend mm. we are full yep. we are full of the spirit we are full of gratitude we are full because we made a new family and we feel connected and it was just transformational so we got to um, not only just be a part of something so amazing this weekend but we got to do it in such a beautiful place so you know bar none this is just absolutely amazing. Wasn't that an amazing experience? It was phenomenal. I can't wait till this one. And so listen, guys, the link to register is at the bottom of the video in the description. You want to sign up for this. It is just $89 for this virtual event. Get it now. May not be yes. able to get it for this price again. Absolutely. So this could be a, a blessing in disguise that it's actually virtual. And when you register, you have something yeah. coming to you in the mail to make it very experiential. Yeah. So guys, I hope that this was helpful for you today. I hope that you're getting something out of watching this. We encourage you share this. Subscribe to the YouTube um, uh, channel. Uh, click the notification button so that you get regular notifications about when we go live. And then if you are a part of a community and you know somebody who's going through this situation, sometimes the topic isn't for you, but it's for somebody that you yeah. know. And if you know somebody, do the right thing, share it with them so that you can help invest into their marriage. But until then, we will see you on tomorrow morning. Love you guys. Take care. Can bring us down. Can nothing bring us down. Our love is too high. Bring us down. Can't nothing bring us down.